We have troubles with my door here. So once you get to I might have to go out and uh, open it closer. <laughs> if you see me disappear, you know why. <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Disney Park Talk Live for January 19th, 2019. This is the show we talk about the week in Disney Park news. This week, you get a week in the day. I'll be right back. So, as always, we you get have... a week in one day because uh, yesterday was a holiday, and so we are doing it one day later. My name is Doobie Mosley. Joining me, I not sure to my left is my wife Rebecca Mosley. <laughs> Jeremiah. Joining us live from uh, Ale House in Orlando <laughs> is, is Rebecca. She's with us. Uh, from the Ale House, Miller Ale House in Orlando, complete with background music that we'd rather not have as he waits for his chicken fettuccine Alfredo, is Jeremiah. Hi, guys. Uh, today's vice president of Eating While Broadcasting. And over there is Mike Celestino, the head of everything Southern California, Star Wars, and Muppets for Laughing Place. Thanks. Hi. Thank you for having me again every and week. It, it's a good day to have you for Muppets because it's a big day for Muppets. And yeah. It's I've not a been, theme park story. Mike, I how spent, do you feel about this? I, I've spent the last like four hours just only thinking about Muppets, which is always good. <laughs> and, and did you come to any conclusion? I conclude that I am very excited to uh, watch the episodes of The Muppet Show that I haven't seen ever uh, which are all in season four and five, which have never been released on DVD. That's so exciting. So, <laughs> yeah, we watched them in first drive. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I've never seen them ever, and it just dawned on me. I, you know what? I take it back. I may have seen them when I was one or two years old when they were airing. So, okay, they, they had reruns of them. Rub it in more. I can still remember that my bedtime used to be extended so I could stay up and watch the Muppets. <laughs> I've, I've never been a Muppet Show fan, so I'm going to. Uh... Here's frozen on it. I might give us a good college try here. But anyway, we're going to talk Disney theme parks. As a reminder, we're live right now. So if you have any questions about Disney theme parks, anything happening in the world of theme parks, just let us know. We will uh, get to it. We're going to mute Jeremiah when he's not on the air because he's got some BGM. So forgive us if we miss some of his uh, words of wisdom. Anyway. Our top story today, our top story, of course, of the year thus far, maybe of the millennium in the world of Disney, is that Disneyland announced officially, um, almost hard to say, hard to believe, that they are canceling their annual pass holder program. We had a live stream about this right after it happened. Um, so you've heard a lot of our thoughts about it, but we actually did not have Mr. Um, Laughing Place Southern California on that stream. So Mike Celestino. Um, what are your feelings about the fact that you no longer have a Disneyland annual pass? Yeah, it's a bummer, I think, is the word I would use, because uh, I've been an annual pass holder since the late 90s, so over 20 years, really. There were maybe a couple years in there where I didn't renew. I think, well, I lived in New York for one of those years, so I didn't have a pass then. But for the most part, since like 1998, I've been a pass holder. And in the last five years since I've been a theme park and Disney journalist, I've gone to the park like once a week when it was open. So <laughs> it's re it's tough for me already. What? Jeremiah, stealing the show. Go ahead, Mike. Just laughing at me, of course. <laughs> Just because he's drinking a soda. <laughs> yeah. Do we, do we has a hard time focusing? <laughs> I can't see him now. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, it, it's been a tough year already because we uh, the park has been closed since march 
and then knowing that when it does come back, I, I probably won't be able to go as often as I was going. That'll that'll be tricky for a while. But like I told Doobie before we started the stream, I'm I'm coasting on the the hope that eventually there will be an alternative uh, pass right. or membership option in the yeah. future. I'm just, I think for me, I'm just interested to see how long it takes before they're able to kind of, you know, right now there's all this pent up demand. And so I'm interested to see how long it'll be before they kind of feel that the pressure valve has been released on that enough to right. where they can have something that allows people to be a more frequent guest, kind of, you know, a, a, a mem their membership. When, how quickly will we see that kind of thing come online? Cause I mean, I, I don't envision a long-term answer being, um no frequency so you know it's just a matter yeah. of when do we finally see it come back and in, in what form does it does it take yeah it's inconceivable to me that angle pass that i shouldn't say angle passes that a way for a person to get into disneyland on a regular basis without buying an admission each time will not come back very 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 soon it's just ingrained and, and i think it's ingrained in their economics too i mean a huge part of their numbers are are locals and that not only affects the ticket price, but I mean, fine, they get in for a flat ticket price, but then they go spend money once they're there on merchandise, on food. It affects just their general love of Disney, which, you know. I, I, the feeling of being part you know, of something. Right, so mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that that won't be back. Jeremiah, your, your thoughts on this? As we mute and unmute each other at the same time. Oh, unmute yourself, Jeremiah, I can't do it. You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It, you know, like Mike was saying, this is so strange. I mean, I was an annual pass holder longer than, almost longer than I can remember. But the between being an annual pass holder and cast member, and then when I moved to Florida, I was got the premier pass, so I knew that I could always go home and go to Disneyland at least one day. It, it's strange. I'm not, I just don't know what, the future is going to hold. I mean, I'm waiting just like everybody else for the membership information. But one of the things that you did say, Doobie, about the annual passes, and this is where I think Disneyland may not be so gung ho about bringing it back, was that they always go buy merchandise and food because that was one of the downsides. When I was a cast member, we'd always hear how the annual pass community would come take up space and not buy any food or merchandise. And then that was kind of the downside of it. I know that me, you, Rebecca, Mike, we all would go there and definitely buy merchandise. I mean, just look behind Mike. Uh, but it, it will be interesting to see what happens with this. Yeah. Um, one point of clarification, for whatever reason, it's been in the news just in the past couple of days that Disney World will not have annual, does not have new annual pass sales. That is not a new thing. Disney World has not sold annual passes for new people since the reopening. They've only had renewal, and um, <laughs> and uh, um, no, they have not said anything yet about when you will be, uh, once again be able to buy them. But they've made zero announcement about Disney World annual pass. All the renewals have continued to sell. New ones have never started since reopening, and I don't think we anticipate them restarting now. So this isn't a surprise. Um, so. Nothing new is for Disney World, as far as we know. I don't think any of us are quite panicking. So, regarding I, can, so I can't move to Florida, is what you're saying. You Once everything goes back to normal, hopefully you can move to Florida. But no, right now you can't. How, <laughs> however, the, the Florida, there's a Florida resident ticket price right now That's that is true. pretty, pretty, pretty attractive. 50 bucks a visit. Yeah. So, so it, oh. you know, it's... It's not that you can, you know, make a bit of an investment and it kind of ties you over and you can get in one. And that's one I, of the sorry, things. Sorry, I can't hear you over Sting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I think that we'll see more with Disneyland is the 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 day ticket price, like a multi-day ticket price as opposed to annual pass, I think will be the first thing they do. That way they can do the five or six days for a, some mm -hmm. set amount and not multi-day like the pass. I mean, it's, there's no question, Disneyland had an issue. The place just was overrun with annual pass holders. They've raised the price, raised the price, raised the price. For some reason, the normal laws of supply and demand or no, that's not supply and demand. The normal law of economics just don't work there. The more they raise the price, the more annual pass holders they got. So 
I think they had to do something, and this was their chance to do it. I doubt it's permanent, but we'll see. You know, yep. If it is, it would so change the way things work there. It would, it'll you know, be very, the mind would be blown all over the house. It'll be very in interesting to watch the dynamics evolve on that. All right, but back to stories. We, with, oh, uh, wait, before yes. we move on, just one more thing. We have seen this kind of ebb and flow of an annual pass holder program being available at Tokyo, correct? Where they've had it for a bit and then they got rid of it. Am I am I totally wrong on that? Maybe Jeremiah knows. I feel I, I feel like I remember it being somewhere where they had one and they got rid of it. But uh, Tokyo has had the kind of a cap in the past where they stopped making annual passes available. I mean, Disneyland should have done that many, many years ago with the amount of annual passes sold. But I think that that's where it was, where they just kind of put a cap out on it. They didn't stop it altogether. Okay. And, and at Disneyland, lest we forget, back in 2001, they actually stopped selling two park annual passes for a while. They made it you could only buy a Disneyland pass, lest DCA get overrun with guests. <laughs> ah, that was 20 years ago. Okay, so well, probably 20 years ago right now. There's some other <laughs> news coming out, right? Yeah, so um, in other news regarding the Disneyland Resort, uh, Mike Celestino, you want to tell us about your favorite part of downtown Disney? My favorite part? Which is the trading. Okay, so yeah, uh, a little while ago they shut down the Wonderground Gallery at Downtown Disney, which is a fun store we could buy like art and uh, some cool apparel and collectibles and stuff. So that got shut down for them to open the Star Wars Trading Post, which is now where you go to get your Star Wars Galaxy's Edge merchandise at Disneyland Resort, because obviously the park has not been open for 10 months. So uh, instead of that, now it looks like they're bringing back Wonderground Gallery, which is good because everybody was complaining about that. And I also miss Wonderground Gallery. That's a, that's a fun shop to go into. And instead, they're going to move the Star Wars Trading Post over to the former Rainforest Cafe, which I think is great i've been curious what it looks like inside there since they shut that restaurant down you know they they shut down the rainforest cafe to build a hotel a couple years <laughs> ago and then that fell through the hotel got canceled and that just sat there empty and and shuttered up and it, it's kind of uh i mean it's cool looking but it is kind of an eyesore to have that building there and not have anything going on inside there so um I, i'm glad they decided to use it for something else also it kind of has a oddly kind of a Star Wars feel to it. If you look at some of the rebel bases on Yavin or whatever, um, it does feel almost very Star Warsy. So we'll see how they decorate the inside there when that opens up. What Now, what's going to happen to the food kiosk that was out there, the Asian Street Eats that was out in front of there? Did they say that was going away? I don't think they made any mention of the kiosk. Am I? Uh, there wasn't any mention. I know that they could. That was pretty temporary. It was almost like a food truck that they just kind of put a little permanent on. Also, can I tell you that the Sending Out an SOS to the World song is like one of the longest songs in the world. Uh, but one of the one of the funny things, um, Disney's Festival of the Arts is going on out here at Epcot, and I was talking to one of the artists who is from California and he said that Wonderground Gallery is never coming back and he made this point while he was talking to me about it. He's like, my friend did some designs for Star Wars stuff that'll go into the Wonderground and then the next day they announced this. I just wanted to find him go. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. I, I thought it was funny that Mike said that this fits into nice the Star Wars theme. I thought they had already rethemed the building for Star Wars because it was so nice place. And then if you remember, they had all the animals inside, like the rings and elves. You got to you got to mute Jeremiah because I cannot hear a word you're saying. <laughs> Is this not a great idea? It's what the animals that are inside the Rainforest Cafe. There you go. That, yes, put put Bantha costumes on the elephants. Let's see. There's and, a gorilla too, right? What could the gorilla look like? A, a wampa. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Wampa. Or, may, or, may, or maybe you could go more adorable, make it into some sort of Ewok, right? Kind of. Put throw some gear on it, make, make it make it look more more Ewoking Ewok. That's are mantas edible? Banthas are they used for food? I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I've heard the term bantha steak before in yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, I, in fact, I'm pretty sure in Mandalorian, didn't she refer to to when she was talking about no, just Rodians. So never mind. Um, <laughs> All of a sudden, we've morphed into Star Wars headlines. Well, no, 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 I was just remembering the discussion in the junkyard about how she wanted her meat cooked, and my, in my, I had Bantha, but no, I don't think Bantha. Was Gideon thought Tusken Raider for the gorillas. 
Oh, just put those things in their hands. That'd be funny. Yeah, just throw that, good. throw that, throw that <laughs> mask over there. <laughs> there you go. There's our next viral okay. article. Awesome. Um, all right. Still staying on the EU West Coast. Uh, oh. And the fact that it's all rainforesty could be kind of like Dagobah. Right? Tony kinda. says, "Aren't the animals gone, or has it become a Jurassic yeah, Park yeah, site yeah, situation?" Yeah, yeah. I actually, I have to say, I interviewed a guy back when I was at a different website i interviewed a guy who has this um brewery downtown and he has he's like a big theme park fan he used to be a theme park designer and he opened up this place called the lost spirits distillery that's kind of all like theme park inspired i interviewed him and he was talking about buying up all the animatronics and and stuff from rainforest cafe when that was closing down so i think they did sell them all off uh to tony's point there sell them back um all right in kind of a mixture of disneyland news and real world news um disneyland resort this was written before it actually opened but now serves as a covid 19 vaccine dispensing site which is kind of exciting not as exciting as a lot of people thought meaning you'd like get your vaccine done at mr toad's wild ride or something but it's actually um, in one of the parking lots. But still, kind of exciting. Go to Disneyland, get your vaccine. In a lot of ways, I think Disney has saved my life, so I can kind of relate to this. They're going to put it in the pirate's water so it splashes on you, and that's how you get vaccinated. Did I ever tell you about the, the time I uh, went on Pirates of the Caribbean and there was a kid in the row in front of me and the entire... Right, he kept dipping his hand in the water and going. <sighs> Have I told you guys oh, that story? No. Through the entire no. ride, like for all 12, 13 minutes of that ride. <laughs> oh, why did you do that, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Some kid. <laughs> he was like a six year old kid. He's probably dead of dysentery now. <laughs> he didn't make it till seven. That's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any thoughts about getting vaccinated at the Disneyland Resort? I did yeah. see somebody making the joke that uh, you could pay to get the Star Wars upgrade and they'll come in with the interrogation <laughs> droid with the needle. That's cool. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty funny. Um, okay. And finally. Uh... Oh, but, but we should mention that that uh, shut down today because of the high winds. Yeah, for all you non-Californians, you don't know what's going on out here, but it's like it's like it's Oz crazy. out here. It's crazy. <laughs> Driving, I was I just took a small trip, and like debris is just hitting my car. It's you know how usually it sounds when it's like a heavy rain. Yeah, that's what it was like, but it was just little <laughs> leaves and twigs and things falling out of the trees on my car. It's a little intimidating. Yeah, I'm looking outside something. right now, and the plants are just blowing all over the place. Oh, there's yeah. debris. There's debris. Just oh, watch out for the cows. I made the mistake of opening my door, you know, just a little bit, and the wind caught it, and I was still holding on to my shoulder. I, I injured my shoulder because it ripped it ripped the door out of my hand, yeah. So, uh, And I saw some sharks flying around up there, so I'm pretty excited about what's to come. So, yeah. So, in theory, it was so, out there. So this vaccination location, it's actually – large tents in the parking lot of the toy story lot area and so with these high winds a lot of our external vaccination locations including this one you know are not are not operating i i don't know if they're having to take down the tent or if they're concerned about um you know just safety of trying to put people in something that could blow away at any moment <laughs> but but that's but that's what's going on that so is a problem that yeah. is a potential problem so, so there you go. Get your vaccine and get hit in the head. <laughs> not, not, a, not a good trade off. I know. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to keep it straight here. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> I'm not good at I this. I couldn't believe how windy it was. I kept hearing about these high winds and then I out in it. I was like, whoa. Oh, it's crazy it's out there. It's intimidating. Dorothy's living the life. Wow, like cars were that no. All right. So first of all, I'll start with you on this one, Mike, because it is a design resort story. What did Tom Holland do and where did why did he do it? <laughs> Okay, well, they released a video of Tom Holland against the green screen shooting footage for the Spider-Man Web Slingers attraction coming to Avengers Campus. And he seemed very enthusiastic about it. And he said it was, quote, the time he felt most like Spider-Man, which I thought was odd. 
<laughs> because he's played Spider-Man for a number of years now, and he's been in the costume. And this he's not even in the Spider-Man costume. I don't know. Did that seem odd to you guys? <laughs> it does now. Yeah. I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> well, he's got the web sweatshirt on, though. That's got to really give him some of that feel, you know? I guess so. Um, yeah, it looks, looks like he's mostly against the green screen. And there is part of him in the in the ride vehicle as well, going like this. So, th Does this ride excite you, Mike? I guess. I, I don't know. It remains to be seen what it's all about for me. How about you, Jeremiah? Um, I... Anybody that's been out to uh, Legoland, Florida, has seen this type of attraction on the Ninjago ride that is very, like, you you throw things. So it's just, instead, you spit, you you thwop, thwop, thwop. Um, I, I hope the visuals make it worth it, because the ride itself is difficult to go on more than once out here. So I don't know how the change will be out to there. You feel like it, go ahead, Mike. I just feel like it has so much to live up to because everybody loves that Spider-Man ride at Islands of Adventure. <laughs> right? Lower the expectations, Mike. This is not that level. Right. But you, you feel like it should be, though, right? Like it's Disney. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not that. It's You like interactive rides, though, right? Uh, I love, okay, so I love interactive rides, but you're right in that because of Spider-Man at Islands of Adventure, I expect something that immersive, but then with the interactivity, but instead you're you're trying to get me to think more like Midway Mania. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even go Midway Mania. I mean, really? the Ninjago ride is just that. 3Ds the entire way. It screams nonstop and with little things. I mean, I'm sure that this will be more than just the basic screens, but it is like um, you pull into a scene and you you aim your hands at whatever you're shooting at, which will be the the amazing walking web bots. So you've done you've done Ninjago, yeah. So you said this essentially Ninjago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, but as we all know, this is only the minor of the hopeful rides we will eventually get in this land. There, this is like the Navi River journey, and we're still hoping that there will be a um, flight, of passage, flight of passage, even though the wait was half as long today. So, um, but that remains to be seen. How many times well, do you- I mean, they've it? officially announced that, right? Like they haven't said that that attraction is canceled or anything, have they? I don't no. believe it. Did they ever announce it? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they announced, officially announced it. But it, we've heard that it, it could be postponed, but I think they're in the midst of building that. Isn't that what it, the uh, the Quinjet's on top of that building or that part of that building? I would guess. Right. All right, Jeremiah, finally, it's your turn. Yay! Um, tell us about your trip to the bathroom. Oh, my trip to the bathroom was lots of fun. Uh, I will try to talk fast because the music is quite entertaining for me. I'm enjoying this. Uh, France, the Remy's Ratatouille adventure. Uh, yesterday, because they closed the restrooms in Morocco for refurbishment, they opened up the smaller restrooms in the back of the France pavilion, which previously there hadn't been any bathrooms in that area. So you walk down this walkway, to the right is the restroom, to the left is, at the very end will be the creperie, which we've not heard anything about it opening, but it does offer some beautiful views of the water. Uh, the buildings look amazing. And then of course you can sit, the Skyliner like comes right at you. I know Doobie, you'll sit there for hours when you finally get a chance. I love this view, this view is great. Oh, and, and how were the, did you actually get to use them? I did use the restrooms. Um, they are smaller than the ones in Morocco. So I, I'm concerned about the capacity of them, especially being right next to a major attraction. It's not, it, it definitely isn't a, uh, like the uh, new bathrooms in um, the American Adventure where they have just lines and lines of space for guests to use the restrooms. Here it's just a handful. Are they well stocked? 
uh, they were well stocked and they had cleaners in there like constantly. There were also quite a bit of managers out front that were having to answer the question every five seconds of, no, the attraction is not going to open. How was the water temperature of the tank? It was warm, which was nice because it was a bit chilly last night. Thank you. Um, someone trying to make an entrance here. Donna wants to know what you're eating. One of our regulars here. I feel we owe it to her. Mm. He's muted, but if you read this, you heard it. Fettuccine Alfredo. My <laughs> chicken fettuccine Alfredo with broccoli that I had the one bite of off camera. <laughs> so subtly, too. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jeremiah, did you get to see these adorable little little friends up close, huh? Yes, I had. I um, our walk and talk. We had a special guest pop up every now and then, um, and the the clothing for them is very cute. Uh, you also, I, I sent you the link to the photo of the lounge fly backpacks that actually have designs on the inside. I was so impressed. That's Instead of doing an unboxing, you should do a redressing. <laughs> but the biggest problem with their clothing is you can't take their other clothing off. So you have to put it on top of their clothing. Like Donald's hat isn't removable. So you have to put the hat on top of the hat. Yeah, I was, I was talking about that with a friend of mine. That I was disappointed that Minnie's bow doesn't come off because there's lots of other like, little bows and stuff. But you can't really use it with with in, in the way that it, it's been designed. It's interesting. Is it, it's if, interesting if Minnie's tool came off, would it just be Mickey? Well, no, be, the eyes are different because I looked because I debated buying Mickey because of that. Because then I thought, well, because they have a mini bow as one of the outfits, and I thought, oh, maybe I should get um uh, uh yeah for that reason. And but I didn't. I almost got Stitch. They have Stitch. I can't believe you didn't get they have Stitch, Stitch Angel, Minnie. Don, Donald, Daisy, and Mickey. And what are they called? Disney. It's called hashtag Disney Disney. Yes. And yeah. they did say that every week there will be something new released. So yeah. wishable Wednesdays, but um, those every single week with costumes and characters. And next week, apparently, I've heard is Ashley Eckstein, right? Related stuff. Oh, is that I? I just someone mentioned that to me. I haven't looked myself. So Jeremiah's well, looking at me because like I'm saying something that it might not be accurate. So. We saw <laughs> Ashley post something on her Instagram this morning of one of them wearing one of her spirit jerseys. But okay. I didn't read into it much. Yeah. No. From what from what I understand, we should expect to see. I I would my understanding would be what her universe um in in new emo size. So very will you, cute. Will you buy that, Mike? Since it's something Star Wars. What was it? Sorry, I drifted if away. They, if they if they had one of these posable, dressable figures, but it was a dis, uh, Star Wars character, and then they had Star Wars gear, like you could have your matching spirit jersey with your posable Nuimo. Is that something Mike would yeah. add to his list of stuff? That doesn't sound like me. I, I figured you'd get something that way you guys could have matching clothes. Yeah, you could like travel with your Boba Fett. You and bought me and my Boba Fett. <laughs> They do have specific Walt Disney World spirit jerseys. They have the black and the pink. So, Mike, get on it. Yep. You got to get your spirit jersey. Get some spirit, Mike. I haven't gotten into the spirit jerseys. Sparkles, thank you for watching us on Twitch. Yes, we now broadcast on Twitch now, and I appreciate you supporting the stream. I don't know if Twitch has thumbs up or something, but whatever they have, please do it. <laughs> you can follow us. <laughs> follow us on Twitch. Yes. Um, all right, and speaking of merchandise and Ratatouille, Jeremiah, pull yourself back up because we may not have Remi Remy's Ratatouille Adventure yet, but we do have the merchandise, right, Jeremiah? Uh, yes, they, this line was actually discovered by one of our counterparts here at Laughing Place's wife while she was walking the pavilion because apparently I never walk into this one store. Um, and they have some Ratatouille phone cases this keychain is great with the gustos and i believe on the other side it has a remy can, yes. can i just say that i found the, the messaging on that magnet particularly insightful given what's going on right now because the only thing predictable about life is its unpredictability 
which includes when this attraction is open. <laughs> hey, we, the banner says coming in 2021. It doesn't say coming January 21st, 2021, or whatever people are expecting. I know when they took down the walls, uh, I went up, I was there the day after they took down the walls, and there were people standing out front, much like I think all of us have done waiting for an attraction to open, but not the day the walls come down and there were two guys with gopros just waiting and my friend went later in the day and said they were still standing there like hours later oh, very nice. i've done that i've, done that. I've done that yeah, i remember the time Mike you did that for um the new jurassic boat ride at universal studios and it never opened and that turned out to be such a disappointing trip didn't it mike that was quite a day i, I had forgotten about that until you just mentioned it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we thought it was going to soft open that day. I think it had soft opened other days, and we were like, okay, we're going to go tomorrow or whatever. I'm going to just wait there. And I waited there the entire day. The ride did not open. But you did get a good video of a dinosaur show. No, I, I had gotten that video another day. Like that, because yeah. the, the dino meet and greet stuff, the raptor encounter or whatever, had opened previously, and the ride was still under construction. And then this soft opening started, so I just went back with the intent of getting the ride. And I think I don't, I, I, I think I didn't get anything useful that day. It was just a day of me sitting down there on the lower uh, lot area. But it reminds me of the time that Mike Mack waited for Hagrid's motorbike adventure for twelve hours. He eventually got hours. on it, didn't he? <laughs> and I went the next day and waited like 45 minutes, <laughs> much like my Gideon's experience. But let's not talk about that. And, and Tony, by the way, our buddy Tony would much rather do the 10-hour wait as we know. All right. Um, let's go back to Mike real quick before we get back to Disney Springs and Jeremiah can let, give him a moment to eat before we talk about eating. Mike got to do the coolest thing in Southern California theme parks. You want to talk about it? You know what? I know you're you're being tongue in cheek there, but it was actually really cool because <laughs> have you ever driven your car through a major theme park? <laughs> like no. I wasn't expecting, I didn't know what this was really, but Laughing Place bought me a ticket and it's, a, it's called the Sesame Street Parade of Lights at SeaWorld San Diego. And what happens is you just show up and you show them your barcode, they scan you, and then they put you in this line of cars that, and you drive on to the park, onto the paths of the park. And they've got this long winding path that goes all around the entire park. And they've got you know all the floats from the Sesame Street characters and the characters are there waving at you. And uh, they left all the Christmas lights up still. So the, uh, the lights are still there and it's just, I think really, really worth the price of admission. If you had the fun pass, it's only 40 bucks. I think it's 50 without the fun pass. And if you, you bring your whole family, it's like 10, 15 bucks a person maybe. But um, it, it, the whole thing was, it's like maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour long. And uh, yeah, if, if your kids are Sesame Street fans, this is something that I highly recommend because uh, I was impressed with what they were able to put together. You are. I know you've said it, but it's still hard to believe. You're literally inside the park driving your car. Yes, you are driving your car around SeaWorld in, on the paths <laughs> of the actual theme park itself. Yes. That is bizarro. That is truly bizarre. Um, cool. Well, I'm glad you got to do that. How does it compare to the, what was the one he did? The Happy, happy Place drive through whatever? I will say I was much oh, I more tree. satisfied with this one. Tree. I think it's also cheaper than the happy <laughs> that enormous tree. Yeah. Is that tree on the big sky um, tower? So yeah, I'm yes. so glad to see that. Oh, I love that thing. Did you happen to glance any sea life while you drove through? No, no real sea Did life. See All the even there is one place where you drive past the penguin exhibit and usually in that on the outdoor section of that exhibit there were usually some penguins that hang out in the water there, but they had uh, covered that up with some partitions and stuff so the penguins wouldn't be disturbed probably by the cars driving through 
So you don't get to actually um, see any sea life, unfortunately. Was, was there like was there like music playing as you were passing yes. through, or did you put your okay? I was like, or did they have you turn to a radio station, like you know, when you drive by somebody's house? I wasn't yeah. sure. Well, well both, both. They do have the music playing on the PA outside, and then you can also tune in your radio to hear it in your car. And it's all it's all like Sesame Street jams. There's a song called the uh, the Elmo Slide, which I was not familiar with. Um, <laughs> no, I just like Sesame Street and jam put together. Sesame and Street. then, yeah, there's a you know the song uh, moves like Jagger, yeah, like pop song. There's a, a Sesame Street version of it where it's like moves like Cookie Monster or something. Or, oh, um, but yeah, yeah, it's all it's all like uh, Sesame Street. Okay, so it's like it's like that those old um Disney dance parties, you know, like the Tiki Room Macarena kind of yeah. kind of thing. That's that's fun. Jeremiah, <laughs> Mike, you only know the song "Moves Like Jagger" because Scooter sings it for the last Muppet movie. I don't remember Scooter singing it. Yeah, the in the uh, not not the last one, but the 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 Muppets. Oh, the um, J- Jason Segel one. Yeah, yeah I'd forgotten he sings about that. that. No, I've heard I've overheard it at a you know shopping mall or something probably. Are there a lot of spots like this where they have characters on the float? Yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. Every once in a while, you come across a float with the characters waving at you. The Big Bird is really cool. The yeah, there's Elmo, Bert, and Ernie, uh, the Count, all your favorites. Very cool. I'm glad you got to do. It. I'm glad they're doing that. Sea World and Nuts both have been very very creative in figuring out how to do something during this time while Disney, see, I mean, obviously Disney has a much bigger company. They have more ways to make money, but even more or less content with just opening up their downtown Disney and leaving it at that. So, Can you imagine driving your car around Disneyland? I don't think the paths are wide enough, first of all. But... That would not go well. Someone's got to turn right and just destroy something. <laughs> I can see it at DCA because I can see that corridor being like big enough that you could do it because you could like come in and then go out the. You could come in by you know harbor and go, and then the parade parade corridor, and then out by you know um, whatever that street is on yeah. the other side. I can see it there, but no, I can't envision it at Disney. It now. does take a lot of faith to let Joe Blow guest just drive through your theme park. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, all right, Jeremiah. I know you have done a fair share of eating today, but let's talk about some of your prior eating. Gideon's Bakehouse has finally opened at Walt Disney World. What do you want to say about it? Um, people need to take a bit of a chill pill. <laughs> now, I'm going to show this video while you talk, because this is one of my favorite videos of all time. Yeah, so, well, before I show it, this is, this is the line for what, Jeremiah? This is the line for the virtual queue sign-up. This is the grand opening day. Uh, the line was about 35 minutes to sign up for the virtual queue that then they gave you, they were going to text you. And they said, when I finally got through the 35 minutes, it'd be six and a half hours to get a cookie. I went to work seven and a half hours later. I got the text saying I could come back to get my print and my stickers and purchase a cookie. I did not. But the amount of people that I got responding to this on Twitter, Instagram, and my Facebook of just like, how dare they? If people want to do it, people do it. You know, people have fun. People want to sit at Disney Springs for seven and a half hours and get cookies. I personally did not. I waited three hours the first day, but that was fun. Um, the the thing for me um, with it, um, Jeremiah, was that um, Mike Mack um, of our team, he actually went to the Springs the next day and with a much shorter wait was still able to get garner some of that um, special stuff. So I was happy to see that they, my worry was like people who had waited all that time might not have gotten that opening, whatever flag it yeah. was you were trying to get. It, it, it was a like signed was and numbered print. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it seems like perhaps some of that was still left the next day, which is nice, you know, because I'd hate for somebody to invest all that time and then, you know, not come away with it. Because if you want to invest the time, you know, more power to you, enjoy it. Yeah, and that's that's all it was. It's like if people want to do it, do it. I mean, but I I did the sign up, and then I if if it would have been within the time, I would have gone back. 
you know, it's much like Rise. I can sign up for Rise at 7 a.m. in the morning and head over to Disney's Hollywood Studios when I want later on as it gets closer. Exactly, Tony. Cool. Um, let's see. Oh, this one. This one's for both of you guys. I'm getting ready to show it off. There you go. So the, the Galactic Star Cruiser, a.k.a. What is it, a.k.a. Jeremiah? What is this thing? Seriously. The Halcyon. Um, that is the Imagineer showing off what the actual bunks will be inside the Halcyon, which it looked interesting. I mean, I don't think that I could fit in that bunk, but the, the stuff they were showing, I mean, that's the port window. You know, there's the concept art of it. So I'm getting more and more excited for this. Not that I wasn't, but seeing the actual, like, it, it translates to a real thing. Mike, you're Mr. Yeah. Star Wars. Any excitement over this? I, yeah, I'm super excited for the Star Wars Hotel still. I, I think it'll it'll be pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know what else to say about it. There's, uh, there's adult lightsaber training. I know people are excited about that. Uh, but yeah, I think the idea of a immersive hotel where you're kind of staying you're living in this fictional world for a few days it's if you neat. if you were to be told that there was this star wars experience hotel coming is this kind of what you pictured or would you have maybe gone in another direction well i think kind of like the land itself i probably would have said it during the original trilogy era because this is set in the sequel trilogy like galaxy's edge is itself but that's my one like minor reservation about the idea and i i do like that they have accounted for the the fact that there's going to be adults who want to go do this outside of you know families with kids that um i you know i hope that it's as accessible to adults as it is to families well it will definitely have a bar area that'll go along with the cantina feel where they'll have the live entertainment which is from what we've been kind of what we've all put together that was the original concept for the expansion of ogas where it's going to be the restaurant inside that would have more of the live action and animatronics they just relocated into the Halcyon. cool uh jeremiah, so also at uh, walt disney world jeremiah they made a, an announcement for american adventure what's that so this took place um, as we were waiting for the media event for the Epcot Festival of the Arts. And we were all expecting something about Ratatouille announcement. And they, they said, you know, Mark Daniels, one of the voices of Walt Disney World, was up on stage. He's walking off. He goes, oh, and one more thing. And turns around and says, we have a special message from Walt Disney Imagineering. And all of us looked at each other like, Ratatouille, Ratatouille. And they show the video <laughs> of the the soul of jazz which will be taking over in the american adventure the gallery which they update on a pretty regular basis so this one is just taking the next step i mean we see in norway their gallery is uh themed around thor and the gods of old this will just be moving into disney pixar soul and focus on jazz music very nice. And then finally, another small Walt Disney World item is this. Jeremiah, did you get to see this in person? Is this your tweet? Uh, yeah, I, I have seen that in person. The arm is extended. Um, this was actually, I believe Tony tweeted that one, but throughout the day and nights, they've been doing a lot of testing with the lights on the, on the barges. And they actually put out the second barge uh, Tuesday. That was the first day the second barge had rolled out or floated out, I guess. So they're they're testing everything. So hopefully we will see uh, Harmonia sometime within this year. And that thing is huge. And then it's huge. And then the arm goes up. So it's even huger and menacing. And then this web comes out of it and, and kind of traps you against 
and then the whole giant Stargate will will be out in the center. They'll bring aliens from different planets in. It'll be amazing. Got to be. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't do all that. But if they did, if they did. All right, um, switching to a whole different part of Disney parks, the Disney Cruise Line, uh, the Disney Wish has had its funnel, or one of its, right? has had uh, the funnel arrive at the shipyard where it's currently being um, constructed, Disney Wish, <laughs> the Disney fifth cruise ship. Um, and there's a look at that funnel. You want to show us that, Rebecca? Um, the website for the um, shipyard, they actually have a webcam, and the Disney Wish is now one of the three um, visions that you can see um, when you visit their website, uh, Murner Wharf, Meyer Wharf. Yes. Um, yeah, that and, was what I was going to say. And the Wish is the first of three new cruise ships Disney has announced. Um, they have not named the other two yet, but it's a part of their Triton class, so they will be expanding their fleet from four to seven ships. I am more excited than anyone in the world about this. And uh, anything that shows that progress is being made is great news. And then not quite Disney Cruise Line, but Disney on Water, Adventures by Disney, has announced their new Expedition Cruises starting in December 21, which I know has my wife excited. Are you excited about this one? I would love to do either of these. What about you guys? Antarctica, Galapagos Islands. Oh, this sounds amazing. Yeah, I, the Antarctica one I'd love to do. I know that uh, Dr. Mark Penning from Disney's Animal Kingdom is on one of the uh, initial tests of these. And he, I got a chance to hang out with him when they did the South Africa ABD. And it would just be amazing to hear his take on the different uh, flora and fauna and animals in that area. The Galapagos is the one that really, really interests me. The others are okay, but I, I don't like cold, so Antarctica <laughs> is not really my cup of tea, per se. But uh, Antarctica is the one that interests me. Yeah. That's just fascinating. Plus, I've always wanted to visit the planet Hoth, and I figure this is as close as I'll ever get. So, <laughs> um, Any of them interest you, Mike C? I would love, yeah, I think I would do that. I would do the Antarctica one. What was the other one? There, one of them's to um, the Buenos Aires um, area uh, to be like an, a, a cowboy and explore the uh, the beauty of Argentina, and then the other one is the Galapagos Islands, and that's more of a like oh, an yeah. expedition cruise. Sure, yeah, those all sound pretty fun. I haven't, yeah, I haven't been to any of those places. And right. then based on Jeremiah's Adventures by Disney experiences, I've read and and talking with um, Ben about his Adventures by Disney experiences. Yeah, I, I feel like if I was going to do those, I know I know that it would be done well um, in the hands of it at ABD. <laughs> so having yeah, never done a, a, an Adventures by Disney, what what would you say makes the trip Disney? Uh, obviously, when you're not visiting a Disney owned location and the people working there are working for Disney. But what what makes it Disney? I'm sad we lost Jeremiah because he's the one who could answer oh. this. Oh, he he's did, gone. Yeah, he did the <laughs> he did the South Africa um, adventure, adventure by right. Disney. I know, and he had like Joe Rody was there singing songs and stuff and giving <laughs> talks and things. But um, I feel I like just, I feel like it's more about more about the the um, Disney as storytellers. Yeah. So it, it's more about. Um, they do a really great job, first of all, of ensuring that adults and children can have adventures that are of interest to both age groups. And you don't necessarily and you can, you know, kind of ebb. there can be kind of an ebb and flow of of adults and kids kind of doing things separately, doing things together. So that's one element of it. But as far as like just for adults purely, everything I understand is that Disney level of service and quality and organization and carrying forth a story. Um, bringing you into into the area in in that in that way. Great, yeah. It's not it's not Disney in the sense of Mickey and all that kind of stuff. It's just the the Disney the story, as as Rebecca said. Kind know. of in the way it, to me, it, a kind of a manifestation of that is the Olani experience. They didn't they didn't like bring Disney specifically to Olani in the, in a way. They they kind of took a took this look at Hawaiian culture and storytelling and some of the folklore of the area and then made that into a Disney level experience. So, okay, um, a couple of final stories, um, not Disney, but Super 
Mario Super Nintendo World, which I know Mike Celestino was like ready to get on a plane and go tomorrow. Big Nintendo guy is uh, supposed to open on February fourth. It has been delayed indefinitely, indefinitely because of the the situation in Japan with the disease. Um, I don't believe I don't believe this has anything to do with like completing the park. It's already had some previews for media and such. I, th- I think this is just a matter of delaying the opening. So while it's called indefinitely. You know, sometimes indefinitely means we'll see if it happens. I don't think that's the case here. But, oh, right. Yeah. No, yeah. This oh, it'll open. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they built it. It's not going <laughs> right. to sit there unused. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, no, it's, this is more about when does the, when do the local authorities and when do the dynamics um, allow for uh, utilization? So, and then the last thing I want to do is just give a quick plug for our big our, uh, LP contributor, Cole who does a great job with the interactive maps of Disney parks through history. He did all four Disney, all six Disney um, North American parks, where you can just go to a park in a year and see what the park looked like on that year, click on any attraction from that year, read about it, see a video of it. He's now completed that for both Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. So you can find those off the front page of Laughing Place. Just scroll down to the Disney interactive maps. Highly recommend that. And um, lots of other little things, but nothing earth shattering. I think we got through the big ones today. So um, obviously go to laughingplace.com for all of this news, like, subscribe on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, as we go live and have tons of videos on everything under the sun. Um, Check out Who's the Boss, which debuts when? Season two? Thursday morning. Oh, exciting. And what's the first episode? THX 1138. We're going chronologically through every major project that Lucasfilm was involved with from it's founding in 1971 up through the Disney acquisition in 2012. So uh, wow. starting with George Lucas's first film, THX 1138. And then great. last night we watched American Graffiti, which is great. I had not seen it in a long time. 20 years I hadn't seen that movie. And it holds up. It is fantastic. THX wow. is boring. <laughs> it, was a, it was a student. I mean... In all honesty, when it was an experimental student film, so aren't those? Supposed, I mean, aren't those by definition? Well, the, the, the short was an experimental student film, but then it became a major oh, right. motion yeah. picture feature yeah. release from Warner Brothers. It's right. just not entertaining that much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing that debate. I don't, if you watch THX and, and American Graffiti back to back, you would think they were by different filmmakers. That, that's the. Uh-huh. Level of difference in uh, entertainment <laughs> quality or, or value in those films. Hey. Um, see, now I want Mike to compare and contrast every, every <laughs> each one, THX to each, each one. <laughs> and you're not doing American Graffiti in this series, are you? Yeah, what? Oh, yeah. oh I, I, I wasn't sure if he was doing every Lucasfilm or every Lucasfilm, you know, because that wasn't, never mind. He's asking, is American Graffiti going to be featured in this celebration? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I rewatched it. Yes, it is. It is a Lucasfilm production, and it is part of the podcast. Yes, uh, maybe you rewatched it just to get THX out of your mouth. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, looking forward to that. I may have to watch American Graffiti. I've never seen that movie, so I I didn't. Re- I had only seen it, I think, once before in college, and I was uh, I was like lukewarm on it. But as as a forty one year old, I yeah. thought it was gangbusters. <laughs> it's now hit your. You've now hit the the um demo for it i'm now old enough to be nostalgic about a time long before i was born that's a great way to put it (laughs) um and let's see there's something else coming up oh yeah disney trivia live no first is barely necessities in just two short hours 4 p.m pacific 7 eastern as uh they talk about the latest in disney merchandise and then 7 30 p.m pacific time tonight disney trivia live until then thank you for tuning in thank you mike celestino Hope Jeremiah's enjoying his fettuccine. 